So, that book buying ban I talked about at the start of the year. Yeah, it's going really well. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am bringing you a slightly forbidden book haul. A lot of these books that are in this pile, I actually didn't buy. There are some of them I got as part of gift cards. There are some of them that were gifted to me. And there are two that I have forbiddenly bought. But since they're not technically TBR books, I think they kind of don't count towards my book buying ban because I've already read both of them. Let's take a look. So first two books on the list were Valentine's gifts for me from my best friend from back at home. So we have got The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler and You Have a Match by Emma Lord. Emma Lord was one of my favourite discoveries from my 2020 author readings and I was really interested to read this book when I heard about it because I like the idea of long lost siblings and found family and that's pretty much what you're getting here. So this is about a girl called Abby who signs up for a DNA kind of matching service when she's doing something for her job. And she discovers to us that she has a half sister that she never knew anything about. So from my understanding, she goes off to discover more about this half sister and to kind of try and form a relationship with this girl. I also have a copy of The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler. And this is one I have seen it around Booktube a couple of times. I am pretty sure Hayley from Hayley and Bookland has read it. And I also think that Amy from Amy Reads read it. I really like discovering new romance authors. And this one is one that has come up quite a lot. This one sounds like my kind of thing. And from what I understand, it has a kind of a grumpy hero, which is something that I really love reading. I love reading about grumpy heroes who meet the sunshine character and kind of come back out of their shell. So when Graham Barnett named his diner the tourist trap, he meant it as a joke. Now he's stuck slinging reindeer dogs to an endless parade of resort visitors who couldn't interest him less. Not even the sweet, enthusiastic tourist in the corner who blushes every time she looks, he looks her way. Two weeks in Alaska isn't just the top item on Zoe Caldwell's bucket list, it's the whole bucket. One look at the mountain town of Moose Springs and she is smitten. But when an act of kindness brings Zoe into Graham's world, she may find there's more to the grumpy local than meets the eye and more to love in Moose Springs than just the Alaskan wilderness. I haven't read many books set in Alaska, but I am kind of trying to read my way more around the US. This is definitely going to take Alaska's box. The next two books were ones that I got as part of a gift card given to me by my parents. So I bought these from Eason's, had them shipped over to Ireland. I have read one of them. I have not read the other one. And they are both by the same author. Marion Keys. So I haven't read The Brightest Star in the Sky. I have no idea what it's about, but I am trying to discover a lot more of Marion's back catalogue at the moment. June the 1st, a bright summer's evening on Monday, and into the busy, bustling homes at 66 Star Street slips, unseen, a mystery visitor. As the couple's flatmates and repentant singletons of number 66 fall in and out of love, clutch at and drop secrets, laugh, cry, and simply try to live, no one suspects the, pa the visitor waiting patiently in the wings. For soon, as the light slowly fades to darkness, everything is going to change. That sounds really exciting. And I really love a kind of an ensemble cast in books. And that's something that Marion writes spectacularly. She did it so well in Grown Ups, the book that she released in 2020. And I am really interested to see how she does it here. The second book of Marion's that I got is The Break. And this is the one that she released second to last. I think this came out in 2018, 17, 18. Around then, 17. This book was published in 2017 in the lead up to the Repeal the Eight referendum in Ireland. And that is something that you should be aware of. If abortion is a sensitive topic for you, it is discussed in this book. This book is about Amy, whose husband Hugh kind of gets like a seven year itch and disappears off to Southeast Asia for six months to kind of discover who he is and reset his life pretty much. And he leaves her back at home to deal with everything that is happening in their lives without him and it's a really great book i really enjoyed this when i read it and i just cannot wait to dip back into it these are two books that i had on my shelves back in ireland and i asked my parents to send them over because i haven't tried them yet but i have heard a lot of really good things about the author i think he has a new book coming out either now or it has come out recently but I wanted to give Jonas Jonasson a try. So I have got The Girl Who Saved the King of Sweden and The Hundred Year Old Man Who Fell Out the Window and Disappeared. 
the titles are a little bit of a mouthful i will accept that i have tried i think the first 50 pages of the 100 year man who fell out the window and disappeared but i didn't really gel with it at the time i think it was more a problem with the reader than it was with the book and i am very interested to try out both of them again also i am getting really into grips with translated fiction and i think that is going to be a great reason to read these ones too the next two ones are kind of the cheats in that they're the books that i bought but i have already read and they are both coincidentally by Irish authors. So the first one is The Hiring Fair by Elizabeth O'Hara, which is one that I have mentioned here on my channel a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. So this one is about Sally and Katie, who are sisters living in Donegal, and their father has recently died in a drowning accident. To kind of make ends meet and keep their family alive, basically, they are sold as scullery maids and servants and home help for the more well-to-do members of the community and also for kind of landowners and wealthy families a little bit further outside of the community. This is the first book of the series and I think it follows Sally and Katie as they're just getting to grips with now not living with their family anymore but living with the more well-to-do families of the area. I really really loved this book. I think it was one of my favourite books from my childhood. It's the first of a trilogy but I haven't read any of the other two so if i still really enjoy this one perhaps i'm gonna go and seek out the other two and the next one is yet another translation of a book that i've read a lot in english and know really well into german to help me with my german skills and so this one is ps ich liebe dich which is the german translation of cecilia hearn's ps i love you it's her debut book it is about 10 or 15 years old by now but I think it is a story that absolutely lives through the ages. It's something that I think a lot of us will have been affected by. People in our families who have cancer, people in our families who have lost their lives to cancer is something that unfortunately has touched many people. I really, really love Holly and Jerry's love story. And I loved reading the notes along with her. I'm just hoping that because I've read it about four or five times in, in English, that I can also understand the German one. And... I also got a packet of uh, brand new little post-it notes so that when I find a new German word that I don't understand, like I do before, I can just put them into the margins there. The next two books were gifts from my friend Shannon from 155 books and I am so thankful to her for posting these out to me. So they are Lord of the Flies by William Golding and we also have Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murtara. Sayar, Sayaka Murata, I think that, that is how you pronounce her name. I have heard that this is a really great book and I've also bought it for a couple of people but I feel like I've bought it for other people enough. Now is the time for me to actually read it for myself and see what all the fuss is about. And as for Lord of the Flies, I am taking part in the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge this year as I do pretty much every year. And one of the prompts is to read a book that is set mainly or entirely outside. Of course, Lord of the Flies takes this prompt pretty easily because quite a lot of the action takes place after the boys have been stranded on a desert island and I think this is the absolute best way that you can check off that prompt. And finally is a gift from my wish list from the lovely Victoria from what Victoria read. She had noticed that I was kind of going through a bit of a slump and a bit of a down patch in the last couple of weeks so she very, very kindly and very, very sneakily went onto my wish list and had a look at what I had to offer. And she picked out for me Homework by Julie Andrews. I have said several times that Julie Andrews is like my surrogate grandmother in that I grew up with her on TV constantly. She's probably one of the most enduring actors that I have seen in so many films. And I absolutely adore the ground she walks on. I genuinely think the day that she passes away, I'm going to go into mourning. I had been really excited to read this when it came out, but I put it on my wish list so that I could kind of keep it in the back of my mind on the back burner and get to it when I was ready for it. Turns out, ready for it now. Victoria, thank you so, so much for sending this to me. I really appreciate it. And I genuinely, I cannot wait to get reading this one. This big, huge stack that I'm going to try and not kill myself picking up <laughs> are all of the books that I have kind of illegally um, acquired recently. Are there any of these that you think that I should start with? I need to put these down pretty quickly. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now. Get on out of here. Oh god, they're gonna clap. They're gonna clap. <laughs>